I don't know if you were on the previous live, but somehow it just didn't work out using the format that I wanted to uh, use. But as I mentioned previously, we are going to cover 11 U sub problems. That's all I have today. But these have been concepts and problems that a lot of students have been using lately, and I think it's useful to review them. So if you're if you have the time for 11 problems, go ahead and pull out a piece of paper, a pencil, or a pen if you're feeling a little adventurous. And uh, let me know in the chat how you're feeling, what you've been covering in class lately. I'm hoping that it's calculus. If not, then give me a heads up. That way we know what to cover next time. All right, 11 U sub problems. That's what we're going to review today. I am just making sure that everything's working on my end. Uh, I can't see the chat, but I'm going to try to find it over here. Oh, I see it. Okay, so let me just... Perfect. Okay, I think it's working on my end. Gosh, I had a really cool format on how I was going to do this. I had some lo-fi music playing in the background, but I think it was using too much um, connection or bandwidth. I don't know. But I'm hoping next time I can have... Um, I can have the Creator Live Studio for Mac. I hope TikTok comes out with it because that'll be a game changer. Hey, SCP. Hello. All right, guys. So I'm just going to go ahead and write the problems that I'm going to do. I'll write them one by one. We'll work on them together. And it's going to be the same concept. I don't think there's going to be any tricks to it except maybe the second to the last one or perhaps the last two. Um, those will be quite uh, interesting. But... As long as you have an understanding of the use substitution uh, method for trig or for integrals, I mean, then I think it's going to be all right. Okay, so here's the first problem that I have. Let me just make sure that everything's showing up on the screen just fine. Yep, looks pretty good so far. All right, so who can tell me in the chat what our u value is going to be if we're going to try to integrate this? Our u value is going to be u is equal to x to the fourth minus 1. And the reason why we're doing this is bec because we're trying to make the integral a lot easier. Okay? But because we're now using a different variable, we're using u, we have to make sure that we find du so that our integral uh, that we have originally is all in terms of u. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take my derivative. du is equal to 4x cubed. And you got to make sure you include that dx. So that's basically the chain rule problem there. Okay. Now, typically the way I like to solve this is I like to move or divide the 4x cubed to the other side. Because what that's going to help me do is isolate the dx. Okay, that's going to prove really helpful. So let's talk about what our new integral is going to be. So if I start from the very beginning, I have the x cubed that I haven't done anything to. But now, instead of that parentheses x to the fourth minus 1, I'm going to go ahead and do u squared. And instead of dx, I'm going to use this value that I'm highlighting. That's going to be my du. du over 4x cubed. And what do you know? You see that x cubed that canceled out in our new integral? That's exactly what we want. That's the whole point of using u sub. So if you think about it, you're kind of doing like a chain rule type problem. It's like reverse chain rule. But that's what happens. That x cubed goes away. And we still have a 4 that we have to account for. Now, the 4 is the denominator. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that outside of the integral and make it 1 fourth integral of u squared du. And now we have a much simpler integral, okay? SCP, what's up? Or is that is that short for something else? Hmm. Anyway, so going back to this. So now, because we're going to take the integral of this, we're going to go ahead and implement that power rule. So we have the 1 fourth, and then u to the third power, all over 3, and then don't forget the plus c every time we have an indefinite integral. So one thing that this is going to th turn to is u cubed over 12 plus c, 
And we are technically done. However, don't forget that we originally had our problem in terms of x. So if you go look back on top, I'm going to highlight this in red. Our u value was x to the fourth minus 1. So that's exactly what I'm going to go ahead and plug in into my answer. So down below, this is really x to the fourth minus 1 to the power of 3 all over 12 plus c. That is my integral. Okay, that was the first one. Let's try the second one. Again, if you're feeling adventurous, pull out a piece of paper and let's work on these together. Okay, so now I have the integral of, it looks like sine of 3x dx. This is actually a lot easier than the other one, I think. Okay, let me know in the chat what you guys think you should be. I would say it's quite simple. It's definitely 3x. So u is equal to 3x. And that means that du, which is the derivative, is equal to what's the derivative of 3x on the right side? It's just 3. And then don't forget, we have to include that dx. All right, as I mentioned, so you see the mechanics of this. It's like the same process. Find u, find your du. And then now I'm going to go ahead and divide the 3 to the other side because I want to isolate that dx. And so I have du over 3 is equal to dx. Okay. So now let's talk about what our integral is going to be. Our new integral is going to be sine of, and instead of 3x, it was the u value. And now instead of dx, this is du over 3. And now we have a really nice integral that's all in terms of u. There's nothing inside the sign. It's all 3x. This is really nice. Okay, so 3 is a denominator that we have there, so I'm just going to go ahead and pull that outside. And I have integral of sine of u du. And this is where a lot of people need to remember, how do we find the integral of sine of u? The common mistake that a lot of people do here is make that sine of u equal to cosine, but that's actually the derivative of sine. So we want to make sure that we make it or that we remember the integral for this. So this is going to be negative cosine. So we have negative one-third sine of u. Can't forget your plus c. And don't forget, I highlight this on top. Our u is equal to 3x. So that's exactly what we're going to go ahead and put at the bottom here. So we have negative one-third sine of, oh my gosh, did I just put a negative sign? I just mentioned that the answer, yes, thank you, 1k3. You're absolutely right. That will be the correct answer. Let me talk about that real quick. It is not sine. Our integral is cosine. I just mentioned that people make that mistake, and I just did it. Okay. So back to substituting that u back in there, it's going to be negative one-third cosine of 3x and then plus c. I think someone in the chat already had the correct answer. Yes, that was true. And you didn't forget your plus c. Nice. Nicely done. Okay. So let's go ahead and try some other ones. Uh, all right. Here's the next one. This is problem number three, integral of root. 3 minus 2x. And a lot of people might think this is easy, and it actually, in my opinion, it is. But, you know, uh, some people have difficulty with it, so bear with me. You know, I want to cover a, a variety of problems here. Okay, so the first thing we want to do, because we have a radical, I'm going to rewrite this as 3 minus 2x to the power of, it's a root, it's going to be 1 half. Okay. And then from there, we're going to have to choose our u value. Again, you, as you can see, if you've been here from the beginning, it's the same idea every single time. We pick our u, we find our du, we plug it back in, integrate, and then find our answer. So in this case, our u is going to be that value inside the parentheses. So 3 minus 2x. Let's go ahead and integrate this. This is negative 2 dx. And I keep saying this, isolate the, the dx, so I'm going to go ahead and divide by negative 2 and give us that du over negative 2 is equal to dx. All right, so let's go ahead and plug everything into our new integral. We're going to have integral of u to the 1 half and then times du over negative 2. As we mentioned, the negative 2 is a denominator, so I'm going to pull that outside. So negative 1 half, integral of u to the 1 half 
DU. Okay, pay close attention to this because we are going to implement the power rule for this. However, a lot of people, for some reason, always forget how to work these fractions. And it's fairly simple. I still have the negative one half, but I have u to the power of, I need to add one to that power, so that becomes three halves. And according to the power rule, I need to divide by three halves. I still have that plus c. So what do people get incorrect? That annoying little fraction, negative one half divided by three halves. But you know, if you need to rewrite it or if you need to do some scratch paper on the side of your work, that's fine, okay? No judgment here. Even in calculus, we forget some fractions. This is technically negative one half times three over two, if you recall your properties of fractions. And this will just be, I said three halves, two over three, my bad. Keep switch flip. And this is gonna be negative one third. So that's what it simplifies to. Okay, do I have enough space? on the screen, on the board, yes I do. So this becomes negative one third u to the three halves plus c and back on top our u was equal to three minus two x so I'm just gonna go ahead and plug that in for the u. So negative one third three minus two x to the three halves plus c. That is our integral. All right guys that was problem number three. I think Looking at my problems, they should get a little more difficult, a little interesting. The next one, number four, is going to be quite similar, but uh, still um, more challenging in my opinion. There's a few things that you always got to keep in mind when it comes to this. Okay, so here is problem number four, integral of 4y over root 2y squared plus 1 dy. Okay, curious to see what people will do here. So in the chat, if you feel like you know what you're doing, or if you feel like you know the first step, go ahead and let me know. This is a dy. Typically, we've been dealing with dx's, but it's still fine. This is just still the, the variable. It doesn't matter what we start off with. dy is the subject, or y. The, the y variable is the subject. Okay. So just like when we took derivatives in any sort of calculus problem, one thing that I would always suggest is turn that radical into a power. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to turn this into 4y over root 2y squared plus 1 to the 1 half dy. Okay. Now it looks like that's definitely what I'm going to make my u, that 2y squared plus 1. So before I even continue, check out what I'm going to do. I'm going to make this 4y, 2y squared plus 1 to the power of negative 1 half. How did I do that? If anyone has some sort of idea of how I did this, go ahead and let me know in the chat. How did I turn that 1 half into the power of negative 1 half? All right. So let's go ahead and find our u u is equal to 2y squared plus 1, du is equal to 4y, and then the derivative of 1 is 0, so we don't really have to worry about that, and then always include the dy, just, as, just like we've been doing the previous problems. Let's divide the 4y to the other side because we want to isolate the dy, and we get du over 4y is equal to dy. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug in these values. Now we use again, we're trying to do u substitution, so we're gonna go we're gonna go ahead and plug in these values uh, into our integral. So we have integral of 4y, and then we have u to the power of negative one half, and then du over 4y. Ah, uh, this is really nice because look at that 4y. One on the top, one on the bottom, cancels out. So we're left with integral of negative u to the negative one half du. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and implement the power rule who can tell me at least what the new power for u is going to be. Let me know in the chat if you feel like you know what that is. And if you feel like you need to do some fraction problems, Anita, shout out to your great grandma. All right, so this is going to be u 
whoops, not integral because I'm already taking the power rule. So it's going to be u. It's just going to be 1 half because negative 1 half plus 1 is 1 half divided by the new power. And of course, we have the plus c. So what does this become? 2u to the 1 half plus c. And what was our u? It was 2y squared plus 1. So we're going to go ahead and plug that in. So we have 2 and then 2y squared plus 1 to the power of 1 half plus c. If we want to get crazy, we can just rewrite this as 2y squared, whoops, 2 times root 2y squared plus 1 plus c. There you go. That was problem number 4. I'm hoping, again, you can see the pattern here. It's all about the same steps over and over again, making your u, finding your du, isolating the dx, plugging it into the integral, and solve. Okay, let's go to number five. So number five, here we go. One over x to the nine. Whoops. Just want to make sure I write this correctly. x to the eight over nine times four plus x to the one ninth dx. Okay, I don't want people to think this is a little confusing. It really isn't. When we take the derivative of whatever we choose our u to be, when we take that derivative, it's just dealing with fractions. That's all it really is. All right. So we have u is equal to 4 plus x to the 1 ninth. And who can tell me in the chat what that du is going to be? It's a bit tricky. But it's not as difficult as you might think. 1 ninth x to the negative 8 over 9 dx. Okay. And now we just have to be very careful here, okay? Before I even move everything to the other side, I'm just going to rewrite this as 1 over 9 x to the 8 over 9. Why? Because we had a negative power. And whenever you have a negative power, you got to bring it down. That's really going to help us. Whoops, let me just continue writing this in green. Okay, and then so now, because I want to isolate the dx, I'm going to go ahead and multiply 9 times x to the power of not, uh, 8 over 9 to the other side. And that leaves me with 9 x to the 8 over 9 du is equal to dx. All right, let's go ahead and implement all those things into our integral. So we have 1 over x to the 8 over 9, and then our u, and then our du was 9x to the 8 over 9. And again, this is no coincidence. That's exactly what we wanted. These problems are intentional. They're made so that you things can cancel out. As you can see, that x to the 9th is going to cancel out. And we technically still have a dx here. That 9 is in the numerator, so I'm just going to put it on the outside. And so now I have du over u. And who knows what the integral of this value is going to be. du over u. Drop it in the chat if you feel like you know what it is. It's going to be natural log of u. So this is going to be 9 natural log. People get really crazy about the absolute value. I'm just going to go ahead and write that. LNU Winston. You got it. Shout out. Okay. 9 LNU plus C. Okay, now I just go ahead and substitute the u value that we originally found, and that was the 4 plus x to the power of 1 9th. So we have 9 natural log of 4 plus x to the 1 9th plus c. That is it. Okay, that was five problems. Now we're going to start doing some trig ones with tangents and secants. I see some e's. Uh, this will be interesting. Oh, man, I'm really excited for problem 10. That was one of my favorite ones. All right, so let's go to number six. Again, if you have a piece of paper, write these down. You can try to solve them on your own, follow along, or just write them out, and then try to solve them later on, you know? Whenever you're bored or you feel like, you know, I think it's now time to uh, improve these math survival skills, go ahead and do it. All right. It looks a little interesting. If you're taking calculus, anyone in the chat who can tell me what my u value needs to be? That is a 7. That is a tangent x to the 7th. Let me go ahead and change that. 
or tangent to the power of 7. So I have tangent to the power of 7 of x over 2, secant squared of x over 2. All right. Give it a few seconds. I'm curious who knows what our u value has to be. Ethan, u is equal to tan. I see that you put tan of k, but I know exactly what you meant. So u is equal to, let's just make it tan of x over 2. <laughs> ever, OFC, or maybe does that mean ever, of course? Don't worry. Uh, I'm curious what math you're taking, but pretty soon if you're ever taking calculus, it's exactly what you'll see. Nice. Winston, u is equal to tan. Yes. <laughs> Ethan, nice. Tan of x over 2. Yeah. How did that autocorrect to k? No clue, but it works. Okay. So du is going to equal to the derivative of tangent. You got to remember that. If not, you're going to have to use some quotient rule, but no way. Uh, I'm going to do that because I memorized this already. This is going to be secant squared of x over 2. And you got to make sure that you multiply this by 1 half by the chain rule, and you're good. Stats and probability. If you go to college and you are taking a, a math class there, if it's calculus, I highly encourage it. Bobby, t taking trig right now. I'm scared for this. Bro, don't worry. It will be fine. Okay, just got to put in some work. That's it. Yeah, and stats and probability, uh, if you know it's like higher level math, you'll see stuff like this, but never in like stats and probability, especially in high school. You're probably taking like the mean, mean, medium mode, standard deviation, um, pretty, pretty simple stuff, but obviously very useful in different fields. Um, okay, back to our problem, guys. I'm getting so distracted. The chat is always distracting me. Okay, so du is equal to secant squared x over 2 times 1 half. So let's go ahead and... Before I even do this, let me just rewrite this. Because you have that times 1 half, I'm just going to do secant squared over x over 2 divided by 2 is equal to dx. And that's going to help us because I'm going to multiply 2 secant squared x over 2 to the other side. Okay. So now I have 2 du over secant squared x over 2 is equal to dx. And no surprise, I'm sure a lot of people, especially uh, Winston and Ethan, are probably going to see this right away and know exactly what's going to cancel out. So we have integral of u to the 7th, because that was our u value, times secant squared x over 2, times 2 du over secant squared x over 2. No surprise there. Excuse my chicken scratch there on that last x, but you'll see those cancel out. And then because the 2 is in the numerator, I'm just going to go ahead and put that outside. So 2 e to the 7th du. And now we just use the power rule. This is like the essential rule that we have to know whenever we're taking the basic integrals. So 2 u to the 8th over 8 plus c. I'm going to do two steps here. I'm going to simplify the 2 over 4 or the 2 over 8 into 1 over 4. And then I'm going to go ahead and substitute the value for my u at the same time. And that was my tangent. So this is my answer, guys. Tangent of x over 2 to the 8th power all over 4 plus c. And Ethan, Ethan, he knows it. Ethan knows the answer. Jeez, all right, I got this next one for you. Uh, let me skip number seven. We're going to do number eight, and then we'll go back to number seven just because it's very uh, similar. So we'll wait for other people to come in and drop in uh, their answers. Okay, pretty simple, I would say. E to the x over 1 plus e to the x dx. All right, so looking at this, who can tell me what my u value is going to be? And while we're at it, so that someone in the chat is going to tell me what the u value is going to be. And also, what would you guys like for me to review? I'm, right now, I'm doing u sub. This is what I felt a lot of people needed to review. Um, but if you feel like you need to review something else, I am more than happy to do that uh, on live. Okay, so let's go ahead and make our u equal to that 1 plus e to the x. And then so our du is simply equal to e to the x dx. Nice, Kevin. You knew it. Okay. 
So now, again, we want to isolate the dx. So I'm just going to go ahead and divide the e to the x to the other side so that I have du over e to the x is equal to dx. And so now let's talk about the new integral we're going to have. Ethan, it seems like you're already ahead of it. Yes. So I'm going to have integral of e to the x over u times du over e to the x. Now I'm showing all the steps here because some people might not be able to see it right away. But just, I think it's always smart to show every single work because if you make a mistake, it's good to look back. Uh, all right, so we have the e to the x that so we cancel out. And then we are left with integral of du over u. And someone in the chat had already said, oh, Ethan, look at that very closely. There's one thing that is incorrect, but you're on the right track. This du over u, that is a very special integral, and that is the natural log of u plus c. Aha, uh -huh, there you go. So someone in the chat had already said, okay, this is going to be my u. Well, we already know what the u is. Let me go ahead and circle it in red up on top. That was our u. So now we just go ahead and plug it back in to our integral. So we have ln, whoops, let me continue using yellow, ln of 1 plus e to the x plus c. All right. Okay. Let's see. I think people are getting warmed up. Okay. Let's, this is one of my favorites. Um, let's do this one. x times x to the, or x times x minus, can't even read my own writing, 8 over x minus 4 to the power of 3 dx. Okay, and I'll tell you something right now, you can definitely use u substitution. This is no other uh, method, at least I don't think it is. It's just going to be u substitution. So who can tell me what the u is going to be? This one's really fun. Okay, so someone said redo the top. I like that. Let me go ahead and try that. So the way we're going to redo the top, what they mean by that is multiply or distribute the x to both values in the parentheses. So this is going to be x squared minus 8x all over x minus 4 to the power of 3. Okay. Okay, so let's try that. Oh, partial fraction. I get, so right now, partial fraction will not work. And I'm just going to tell you that. I know I said oh, I'm, you know, we're only going to do use substitution, but let me just show you what happens if we try to do partial fractions. Try to factor x minus, well, I guess that, that we can factor it out, but just imagine that will be a over x minus 4 plus b over x minus 4 squared plus c over x minus 4 cubed. And then you're going to have to rewrite this as like a x minus 4 squared plus b x minus 4 plus c. And this whole thing has to equal to x squared minus 8x. Kind of seems like could be a lot of work, but I'm just I'm about to show you how you can solve this uh, use substitution. Someone said cover up trick, and I think that is, uh, I haven't heard that before, but I think that's exactly what this is going to be. Everyone calls things differently, but it's still the same thing. Okay, so let's avoid partial fractions. Maybe that's a, another, another time that we can do problems like this. And that actually will be really fun. Maybe I'll cover some like really difficult problems, uh, like the one I have in one of my books for antiderivatives. Okay, so let's just start off with u is equal to x minus 4. du is equal to dx. That's pretty simple. Oh, the cover-up trick is for partial fractions. Okay, I'll look into that. Never heard of that before, but I have to assume it's just a method that uh, people use. And I'm, I'm sure I've seen it before. I just don't know that it's called the cover-up trick. But I'll look for it, or I'll look into it for you. Um, okay, so du, u is equal to x minus 4, du is equal to dx. So check this out. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite my integral. So far, I have x squared minus 8x all over u cubed, whoops, and then du. But we still have an issue here. We still have x's on top and we have u cubed on the bottom, which is fine. But check this out. All right. 
So let me highlight what we have up on top for you. U is equal to x minus 4. I had to stop leaning back because I'm so excited about this one. U is equal to x minus 4. What happens when I move the 4 to the other side? U plus 4 is equal to x. Now we know that u plus 4 is equal to x. So that's exactly what I'm going to plug in for the values of x in here. Let me show you what I mean. This is going to be u plus 4 squared minus 8 u plus 4 over u cubed. And I know it seems like it's a, it's a lot. But let me show you why this makes things a lot easier. OK, so on the top, I'm just going to have to FOIL that. That becomes u squared plus 8u plus 16. And then I'm going to have to distribute the negative 8 and get negative 8u minus 32 all over u cubed du. OK, and look at the top. Let's go ahead and cancel out some things. I believe the 8u cancels out, which is really nice. And then the 16 and the minus 32 can combine. So this is the integral that I have. u squared minus uh, 16 all over u cubed du. Okay, I feel like I need to create some space in the blackboard here. Give me one second. Bruh. This is so fun, isn't it? Uh, no, I'm going to have to do the whole thing. Okay, just give me, bear with me. I'm just making this a little smaller. I do this so many times on Zoom sessions with uh, Calc students because there's so much work to do in one single problem, but that's exactly how we're going to do it. Now can be a good time uh, to do a partial fraction. Scatter plots for algebra one, you mean like best line of best fit? Check this out. Everyone's saying partial fractions. I'm, should I try that next? Because I don't know. I feel like um, uh, this method is a lot easier, but I'll try partial fractions for you guys after. Okay, so look at the integral that we have right now. It's u squared, oh, u squared minus 16 over u cubed. I'm just going to be write it as u squared over u cubed minus 16 over u cubed, du. I did that because it has only one value in the denominator. So I just rewrote uh, the value here. And now I'm left with 1 over u minus 16 u to the negative 3. Now I did... Renny, partial fractions, bro. I'm going to try partial fractions after this. Everyone's pushing for that, but I'm going to try it. Never done it before like that, but I'm, I'm down. Okay, so I have u to the power of negative 3. I did that because I'm going to use the power rule. And now I have natural log of absolute value of u minus 16 uh, u to the negative 2 over negative 2 plus c. Natural log of u becomes 8 or positive 8 over u squared plus c. And what was our u? x minus 4. So this is natural log of x minus 4 plus 8 over u, whoops, x minus 4 squared plus c. I mean, this answer does look like a partial fractions problem. So maybe we should try that? I mean, I don't know. Should we, should we redo this problem and just try to do partial fractions now that we kind of know what the answer is? Thoughts? You guys want to get crazy? I mean, at this point, this could be my last problem because I do have to leave soon. User 596682. Okay, Ethan said, let's do it. User 596682. I, I don't know the other numbers, but yes, I agree. L, uh, U substitution is probably better. But you know what, guys? We're just going to do it. We are going to do um, partial fractions. But hold on. Let me just write the answer to this so that I don't forget it. Hold on. I've been trying to find a pen. Oh, I have a pencil here that was given to me by a sponsor. Okay, x minus 2 squared plus c. Okay. Seems like everyone wants some crazy math. All right, next time, next time I go live on here, I'm going to do some crazy integrals. We're just going to have a good time. We'll probably spend like a full hour doing like two or three, and that's it. Okay, so let me just erase this. This We did uh, use substitution with some... Uh, rewriting cosine squ <laughs> let me write that one down cosine x over x squared plus one why does that sound so familiar I don't know that has to be some okay we'll think about that anyway sorry you guys you guys are getting me 
all distracted. Okay, so let me just rewrite the problem. It was uh, x times x minus 8 over x minus 4 cubed dx. Rafa, hell yeah, man. It's like we're seeing it. Original, okay. So let me, Ethan said, to cover up the denominator factor in the value equation. Okay. Uh, it was x minus 4 to the power of 3, Matthew. That was the original problem. Um, okay, I'm just reading Ethan's said, but cover up the denominator factor in the original equation and the value. Ethan, when we're done, you should definitely try to send me, uh, like email me or something, because I'm really interested in that. I'm trying to, let me just write it out and let's see what happens. Okay, so in the very beginning, we're just going to distribute the x to both of these. And we're going to have x squared minus 8x over, okay, x minus 4 cubed dx. Okay. Yes, Daniel, I agree. U, U sub is much easier, but let's try this. Uh, okay, so I'm going to be right. If we're using partial fractions, we should do A over x minus 4 cubed plus B over x minus 4 squared plus c over x minus 4. we got to account for every single power. Okay, Ethan, I'll look it up. Okay, but I'm going to try it. According to partial fractions, the way I know it, this cover method is really interesting because it, it's got to be a nice shortcut. So we know that x squared minus 8x has to equal to a, I guess just a, plus b, x minus 4, plus c, x minus 4 squared. Okay, so let me just kind of simplify this. The a stays there. On the other one, we're going to go ahead and multiply the b. And then, so this is going to be, whoops, bx minus 4b. And then on the other one, it's going to be x squared minus 8x plus 16. I just rewrote that first. And then we're going to go ahead and distribute the c. Oh my goodness. We just started doing like random integral problems and now there's so many people in the chat. Where's everyone from, by the way? Is this a good time to go live with people? Okay. I have to look for this cover method because people are talking about it. The answer is 12. Okay. So uh, we have x squared minus 8x is equal to a plus bx minus 4b plus cx squared minus 8x plus 16c. Whoa, 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 whoa. Got that wrong. Negative 8cx plus 16c. There's so many people in the chat. 100. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and, and, and try this. So x squared minus 8x is equal to, I'm going to combine, uh, I guess I only have a couple x squared. So cx squared. Okay, so that took care of that. Let's find all the x's. So that's plus b minus 8cx. And then I have plus, and then parentheses, a minus 4b plus 16c. Okay, let me know in the chat if I missed anything. You guys are wild. Partial fractions, it, it is more fun. In Syracuse, and I do calc, but not BC stuff. Oh, bro, calc AB is just as fun, though. Arjun, good luck, man. <laughs> Just dropped out of calc 2. It is a tough one, but I recommend you retake it. Um, okay. So let's see, uh, what do we got? Hopefully everything looks correct. No one said that I made a mistake. Oh, Lexi, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, it, it, calc is really fun. I had an amazing calc teacher, Mr. Bolin. He was incredible and he got me so excited for it. Every time we will do all these different methods. And uh, I think he's, the, I mean, he's definitely the reason why I pursued uh, math in general. Okay, so everything looks like it's correct, but let's so let's go ahead and try. Uh, now that we have this, so if we compare these two, the the uh, the values on the left side, so we have the cx squared that should pair up with the x squared there. So that means that c is equal to one, 
right away it's kind of uh, nice. If we pair this up, the b minus 8c to this negative 8x, that means that b minus 8c is equal to negative 8. But uh, because c is equal to 1, we could do b minus 8 times 1 is equal to negative 8. b minus 8 is equal to negative 8. So b is equal to uh, 0. OK, so c is equal to 1, b is equal to 0. So let's go ahead and try to find, um, how did the calc teacher break up? He said it's time for, <laughs> oh, man, that's a good one. <laughs> How did the calc teacher break up with his wife? He said it's time for a U substitution. <laughs> That's messed up, dude. Okay, so uh, back to this. I guess let me just write it in red. So that A minus 4C plus 16C, A minus 4C plus 16C, it, there's nothing to compare it to on the left side, so that means that that's equal to zero. Okay, so a minus 4, we know c is equal to 1 plus 16. That's equal to, wait, 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 I wrote this wrong. 16. Oh, back to our problem. See that? No one told me I made that mistake. It was minus 4b. Okay, so minus 4b. Guys, got to hold me accountable here. Okay, so let's go back to... Let's just rewrite this. A minus 4 times 0 plus 16 times 1 is equal to 0. So A plus 16 is equal to 0. So A is equal to negative 16. Okay. So those are my coefficients for uh, all those partial fractions. Let me go ahead and create some space here on the blackboard. Let's just make this a little smaller. We're almost done. If Ethan, you're still on here. What do you think? You still down with the uh, with partial fractions? It's fun, that's for sure. Should be four B, Matthew. Thank you. I think I that's the I fixed right because it was plus four B. Yeah, because it was minus four B. Okay, I got to check out that cover method because that will save so much time if we're ever doing partial fractions. Um, Okay, so back to our problem. Remember, we had said, if, I, if you can see this, I'm going to circle it in red. This entire integral was a over x minus 4 cubed plus b over x minus 4 squared plus c over x minus 4 dx. And now we have our values. a is equal to negative 16. So we have integral of negative 16 over x minus 4 cubed. And then uh, plus 0 over x minus 4 squared. Okay, so we're going to take care of that. Plus c, which is just oh, plus, uh, what was c? 1. So 1 over x minus 4 dx. God. Okay, so then we have integral of negative 16 over x minus 4 cubed plus 1 over x minus 4 dx. And here, we're just going to use... Um, I guess I'll just show the work for everyone. Should I show the work for U sub? Sophia, yes, you can easily do uh, do U sub. We actually did that previously, but um, we were just uh, now having fun with this. We were trying different methods. All right, so I'm not going to do U sub here. It seems like everyone should. Okay, never mind. Someone requested it. I'm going to show the work for U sub. So U is equal to x minus 4. So du is equal to dx. So that means that my integrals here are negative 16 over u cubed du plus integral of 1 over u du. <laughs> Froyo, don't be sorry. We did it. It's okay. It doesn't take that long. All right. So now this is going to become a negative 16 u to the negative 2 over negative 2. Holy shit, guys. I think we're going to get that same answer. Oh, my goodness. Ethan. Ethan requested it. Ethan? Uh, natural log of u plus c. Okay, so if we simplify some stuff, this is 8 u to the negative 2 plus natural log of u plus c. And the u substitution was x minus 2. So now we have 8 over x minus, or I, did, I said x minus 2, but it's x minus 4. 8 over x minus 4 squared plus natural log of x minus 4 plus c. Wow, this is the exact answer that we got the first time. 
obviously u sub in the very beginning with uh like rearranging the x values was much easier but i mean ethan you brought up the partial fractions i think that was kind of fun okay i got time for one more integral let's see what do you guys want to do something that you guys seen in class is there a problem that you guys were really confused on I have one that I haven't been able to solve. Do integration by parts. Okay. Sony, we will do we will solve a problem. Okay, integration by parts seems like every do you guys want to do the tic tac toe method? Let me just erase this. So what should we do? Sony, my okay, who can solve this one? Okay, so tic-tac-toe method and integration of parts, DI, yep, different. Okay, so we're going to do some, uh, the tic-tac-toe method. I call it that, but people are going to call it the uh, tabular method or people are going to call it the DI method. But I like to call it the tic-tac-toe just because it's fun. Okay. All right, looks like it's going to be the tic-tac-toe. Uh, Sunny, you keep saying... Cosine of x is equal to x, or sorry, cosine of x over x squared plus 1. I'm sorry, guys. I don't know why I burped there. Um, I don't know how to solve that. I'm going to look into it. I'll do it on, like, the next live or something, but uh, this is fun. Jesus Garcia, if you're starting calculus this semester, practice your algebra. I'm talking just learning how to do rational exponents. Learn how to do... Um, some basic like function decomposition, know your trig uh, identities and your unit circle, and I think you'll be fine. Just have fun with it. All right, tabular method it is. We're gonna use some of that. Um, let's just start off with e to the two x plus one. No, hold on, hold on, let me change it up. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, let's go ahead and do three x plus one to the power of five and then e to the 3x plus 1. Yo, okay. This will be my last problem, then I have to go after that. <laughs> yes, just learn your unit circle. Sine of x over arctangent. I got to write these down because these are so fun. Just checking my battery here. All right, so we're going to do some... Uh, as you can see, I didn't make it as easy. This is going to be a tabular method, a.k.a. tic-tac-toe, a.k.a. the DI method, but it's all the same thing. Okay, so, yeah, the unit circle is not that scary. You're right, it looks scary, but it's actually quite, uh, if you understand the first quadrant, everything else uh, just makes sense. Okay, who can tell me the very first, um, the very first step here? What should I do? Where is uh, Sunny Froyo? You asked for this. Sophia, where you at? What should my U value be, guys? So for you, Zay, yep, that's true. Oh, uh, Froyo, come on. Let's try it out. There you go. <laughs> Mac and D's said U substitution has to be 3x plus 1. Okay, let's go ahead and try it. Zay, Chris, yes. So we're going to make U equal to 3x plus 1. Okay, today, by the way, I made it kind of challenging at the end because people were starting getting crazy on the chat, but I, I love it. Um, we'll do some more like basic stuff, but we kind of started off very easy in the beginning. Um, this is going to be, it's pre-recorded. Well, not pre-recorded. It's going to be recorded. I'm going to put it on YouTube. So if you guys wanted to follow some basic use substitution problems, uh, look at my YouTube channel uh, possibly by tomorrow. Okay, but anyway. Um, so u is equal to 3x. So du is going to be... 3x dx. Like I always mentioned, and I've been mentioning, won't stop mentioning, divide the, I said divide the 3x, divide the 3x to the other sign. So then we're going to have du over 3x is equal to dx. Uh-huh. Yep. Yep. Okay. So now we're going to do integral of u to the fifth times e to the u notice that now it's much cleaner right because we made u equal to that 3x plus 1 times du over uh 3 
I realized that, yeah, no, Jersey. Uh, everyone said, yeah, 3DU. Someone said, okay, someone uh, corrected me there. And Jersey, it is not 3X. It's just 3. My bad. My bad. Guys, if you don't already know, I'm the king of typos. So, I mean, go hard on me. If I mess up, then let me know. Okay, so I'm, let me just correct this real quick. It should be 3U over just 3. So back to our integral, I just wrote 3. And then now we have, I'm going to move the one third on the outside. Now we have u to the fifth power. Well, hold on, hold on. There we go. u to the fifth power, e to the u. Sorry, zoom wasn't working here. It wasn't erasing. Okay. You must know I'm not very smart. I just follow steps. That's all I do. All right. This is where the tabular method, a.k.a. the di method, a.k.a. my what I like to call is the tic-tac-toe method. Okay. Uh, you won't necessarily see tic-tac-toe here. You're going to see more like tic-tac-toe, toe-toe, tic-tac, or whatever. You're going to see what I mean. Okay, so let me just create some space here because I feel like it's going to be very useful. So let me go ahead and just, whoops, make this a little smaller. Okay. So technically, this is an integration by parts problem, but it's super long, so we create a little shortcut, and it's called the tabular method. It's called the DI method. So tabular di or tic-tac-toe okay so first we have to choose what we're going to derive we want a value that we're going to be able to take the uh, derivative of every single time and that's going to be u to the fifth and we chose that one because when we derive that we're eventually going to get to zero okay that's the d part if people are familiar with the DI method, that's what the D part is. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take the derivative of this up until we get to 0. So 5u to the 4th, and then 20u cubed, 60u squared, 120u, 120, 120, and then 0. All right. And then now our i value is the value that we're going to integrate, or easy to integrate, and that's e to the u. So e to the u. What's the integral of e to the u? Who can tell me in the chat? Mm -hmm. Ethan said it's going to be e to the u every single time. I 100% agree. E to the u, 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 e to the u. And then on the left side, we just have to make sure we start with a plus and we just alternate. Plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus. Honestly, if you screw that up, I mean, you're just going to get your entire problem incorrect and that'll be such a bummer. All right, so this is what I mean by the tic-tac-toe. This is why I call it the tic-tac-toe. You're going to start off with the plus sign, and then we're going to go to the u to the fifth, and we're going to go down. So we're kind of doing like a little diagonal, okay? Yeah, someone said make the arrows. Let's go ahead and do the arrows that you were just mentioning. So these are all my arrows. This is what I mean by the tic-tac-toe. So it kind of goes like tic-tac-toe. And I, in this case, I did say that it was going to be longer than that. So it's like tic-tac-toe, tac-toe, but it goes like that. So you just create your arrows, all right? And those arrows just represent the product. So in the very beginning, our answer, or starting from the beginning, I'm going to have to, it's not going to fit. So I'm just going to have to do like u to the fifth, e to the u. That was my first product. <laughs> Flying Turtle, you know, you know the lore. Yes, it is from Stand Deliver. And Jaime Escalante said that tic-tac-toe, and I think he just did tic-tac-toe, so he did it three times. Uh, but that's why I call it that. Tic -tac, uh, Stand Deliver, such a great movie. Anyway, so u to, the, u to the fifth, e to the u, minus five u to the fourth, e to the u. It's not going to fit. Plus 20 u cubed, e to the u minus 60 u squared e to the u plus 120 u e to the u minus 120 e to the u and that's where we end okay now the last part uh yes jersey this is calc 2 the very last part that we're going to do is just plug in the u back into our problem and the u was the 3x plus 1 i'll highlight this or i'll circle it in red up on top so let me just do that, I guess. Okay, last problem, guys. I mean, might as well go off with a bang. I'm not going to leave it unfinished. 
Whoops. Uh, sorry. Okay, much better. I just want things to fit on here. All right, here we go. So the last thing that we're going to do is we're just going to do 3x plus 1 to the fifth power e to the 3x plus 1 minus 5 3x plus 1 to the fourth power e to the 3x plus 1 plus 20 3x plus 1 to the third power e to the 3x plus 1 minus 60 3x plus 1 to the second power e to the 3x plus 1 and then plus 120 3x plus 1 e to the 3x plus 1 last one minus 120 e to the 3x plus 1 and then of course you can't forget your plus c that is it oh thank you 101 calculus i'm just here i'm just serving the people Interesting, Mac and D's. I wonder why they, what they didn't teach you, or perhaps you wrote something wrong. Not trying to, you know, shame you, but maybe, just maybe. I mean, uh, curious, or maybe your teacher just didn't uh, explain it right, and um, and uh, you thought you wrote it correctly, but it wasn't. All right, guys. Oh my goodness, yes. Don't forget the one third. I am. That's the one thing I saw in the very beginning, and I totally forgot about that. Uh why Jeff said don't forget the one-third if let me circle this in red this part right here don't forget that the entire thing had a one-third so when we took the integral back to our problem I should put a one-third on the outside times the whole thing the best how do I do this practice that's it why would some teachers prohibit this I mean for something this long I can understand if it was something simple but, um, yeah, no. Nah. All right, guys. So this is all that I have for today. But let me just leave you with one problem. You're going to do it on your own, and then I'm going to end the session. Uh, but hopefully I'll be back. It looks like this time works for everyone. Um, so I really, really thank you. Please follow, uh, follow along. I'm going to try to go live as much as I can. If it's not here on TikTok, it's going to be on YouTube. But um, I will post these videos on YouTube for you to watch. So in the very beginning, we did some basic integrals, and then we kind of went off the rails because people were just, you know, requesting some other methods, which was really, really fun. Um, but anyway, so let me go ahead and leave you with this one. Uh, let's go ahead and do 4 over x, nah, 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 let's do 3, x squared plus 7x plus 1. Okay, write that one down. That's what I leave you with. <laughs> yes. Yes. Stand deliver. That's only for us. It is a very long answer. I agree. All right. I do post on YouTube. I try to post as much as I can, but go on there. You can go on the link in my bio and just subscribe. Uh, I'm trying to post more long content like this, obviously in a uh, horizontal form. But um, yeah. Quotient or Luis, that would be for the derivative. This is the integral. So keep that in mind. But you know what? Might as well. I'll leave you with this one. Go ahead and take the integral of that. And if you guys want to leave your answers or let me know what you get for your answer, you know, make a video about it and uh, tag me if you like, and I'll respond. All right, guys, I hope everyone's having a great day. Uh, I will see you all real soon. Uh, going to try to go on here as much as I can, but I think this time works for, for me, and I think it'll work for everyone else. All right, guys, have a good one. Happy Tuesday. Bye.